put all the waistband pinned together. And one thing to note with the waistband is it's in two halves and they join on the centre back seam here. Now if your weight does go up and down a lot this is really useful because what you can do is make these even longer still and add some fabric to this back seam near the top and then you can split this seam at the back if you've put on more weight and you can let the trousers out and if you lose some you can bring them in and it's a lot easier than the usual sort of one piece waistband that you get. So I quite like that little bit. I've pinned the belt loops in with this part of the waistband. These will get sewn in place as I go and I'm only sewing the what will be the outer face of the waistband at the moment. All these other layers will come later. So I'm going to sew this on and hopefully these belt loops don't move as I do it and then we'll start adding the extra bits and pieces. Got all of this pressed now and you can see this is why I trap the belt loops in. So because they're part of the seam now they'll be nice and strong and they look nice and tidy. I was going to use this waist tape and I don't think it's going to be needed also gets called twill tape because the amount of material that's going on in this seam and especially when I've got the other layers in there I think the tape's just going to be a bit too much I think it's going to not need it with this fabric so I'll probably use that on the other fabric instead the next stage now that we've got the outer on is to put the inner on put your fabric on and then you sew along this edge and then turn that to the inside and that will catch the belt loops. But I also need some interfacing and that will just give it some rigidity. Uh, so yeah, when that's all, all done it catches the belt loops in the top like this and then on the inside I'll hand sew down onto this edge because that won't take very long and that will get us all done. And you can see the other thing is the pockets themselves are actually caught in this seam so that makes the pockets nice and strong and secure because they're secured here and they're secured here. This turned out very very well. I'm very happy with it. I've not pressed anything yet but I've started to turn the corners, they're nice and crisp. To make sure your corners are nice and crisp the best thing to do is you trim down your seam allowance so that it's very very short and then you just snip up to the stitch line, not through it, just up to it so that then when you turn it the right way round you get a nice smooth curve. The other job I'm doing is just snipping off the excess of the belt loops because there is a little bit. Before I decided to do this bit though one thing I did want to check was that the belt actually goes through the belt loops because this is a very skinny waistband on these and I think I understand now why the waistband is bigger at the front than the back because it's quite loose at the front and as you this is when I'm actually wearing them as a piece of clothing As you get further back on the trousers, the the belt loops get shorter because of the design of the waistband. But that's a good thing because at the back here, that's where your trousers move up and down the most with you standing up and sitting down and moving around. So this is going to be under a lot more stress, it's more likely to stretch out. So by making it smaller at the back to begin with, that's going to be able to deal with those stresses a lot better than the very loose belt loops at the front which are under a lot less stress. Uh, so I, I think that's, I mean that's my theory, I don't know for a fact but that's my theory. Uh, this belt was a good find as well, I looked all over for a skinny leather belt because I didn't have one and I ended up in a charity shop getting this one for a quid. Once I've trimmed off these excess belt loops, because if you remember from earlier they were all different lengths, so once they're all trimmed off 
I can then fold down and press the waistband. We'll fold the edge under like that and then that will be just hand stitched down to this stitch line here. That will catch the top of the pockets. Uh, a lot of these raw edges as well. And these will then very nearly be ready to wear. The only thing I'm going to have to do after that is I need to put the button and buttonhole on at the waistband and then we're ready to go. And trimming off the belt loops is just as it sounds. If you leave them long you'll end up with too much bulk in the waistband so just trim them level with the seam allowance and you're fine. Got the waistband all pressed down. You can see the corners are a lot nicer looking now that they've had a press. For hand sewing I'll pin it all down like that and then hand sew round there. This fabric seems to have stopped fraying so I think I have a slightly quicker way of protecting that than actually hemming down the whole thing which I don't really want to do if I'm honest. I have one button to put on up at the top or two buttons. I've not uh, I've not decided yet whether it's one or two. I think it's probably just going to be the one. And then we have the cuffs to do. And then these will be finished. It's a lot of hand sewing now. And I'm not very good at recording hand sewing, so I'm going to crack on and get everything sewn together and I'll bring you back when I'm ready for the next stage of it, which will probably be checking the leg length. A little bit of time later, and we have got all the waistband now sewn in. We've got the button and the buttonhole for the waistband as well. And all I've done is just a very small whip stitch, just to hold that all over. You can see it catches the top of the pockets as well, so they're all nice and secure. Obviously, there's nothing to see on the outside because of the way that I've sewn it. I'm not a hundred percent on the waistband. I'm not entirely sure I've got it right. So I'm going to try these on because the next job, really the final job, is doing the leg cuffs, which are turn-ups. So these legs are far too long as they are, but that's normal for this style. So I'm going to try these on and see how they fit and whether or not I like them. Hopefully I do. Okay. First impressions on these is that they are ridiculously comfortable. All the time I've been complaining about modern trousers, and I do complain about it a lot, the waist on modern trousers is about here. The waist on these is actually up here. And I do tend to wear a waistcoat a lot of the time. And with this style, there's nothing peeking out under the waistcoat. So I'm really happy with that. You can see from the, the cuffs that this is how much material I need to take up. So you, you lift it to the length you want, and then you roll the top down like that, and then just hem this edge, and that gives you the turn up. So I'll, I'll do that in more detail in a minute. But yeah, I am I'm very happy with these. I think the waistband turned out just about right. And without the waistcoat, you can see just, you know, they're a bit granddad trousers, but that's not really a concern for me because I want to be comfortable and I want the layers of my clothing to line up properly. And honestly, these have turned out looking a lot nicer than I thought they would. I thought these would look very work trousery, but this fabric drapes very well, it's very comfortable, it's very heavy. So I'm, I'm incredibly happy with these. I'm going to finish off these cuffs and give them a press and then I'll give you a, a proper reveal and some decent light on these so that you can see how they actually look. And Let's have a look at how you actually do the turn-ups on this. Now, I was very fortunate today, I had a helper. So rather than the struggle of trying to hem these up to the right length on me on my own, I actually had somebody who could pin them up for me in the right place and get both of them even, which is almost impossible, on your own. So that was great. So the first thing you do, once you've figured out what length you want the trousers to be, you fold up the bottom. 
but unlike when you'd normally hem trousers and you'd fold the excess inside, you actually fold it outside as if you were rolling the cuff up. Then you press the bottom edge here and that becomes your cuff line. So you don't want to go lower than this on anything else that you do. Once you've figured that line out, you then need to fold this fabric back down this way. Here's one I prepared earlier. And when you fold the fabric down, you want to make sure it actually comes longer than the line you've decided for where your hem ends. I've had a look at, at how I want to finish this. There's a couple of different ways I could do it. I'm quite happy to have a fairly chunky cuff on these. I think the width of the trouser legs, it will look better with a heavier cuff than a narrow cuff. So I, I've really left myself most of the material so that I can do that. You can either fold the outer layer up and try and match it with that fold line. The only problem is you're always going to run the risk of this being visible. So what I'm going to choose to do instead is I'm going to fold that up like that. So that's your, that's your excess. And then I'm going to fold the excess in half and then over again. And then I'll hand sew that around the cuff edge, which from the outside will give me a nice seamless cuff. but it won't be too bulky. This will allow the, the trouser legs to swing very nicely and it will make the fabric hang very well as well. So I'm going to do this one first, get this one prepared, and I'll bring you back when I've done all the pressing and the hand sewing so you can see what that looks like. Fresh from the ironing board, these are all nicely pressed now. They've actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting them to. I thought they might turn out nice. But these are slightly better than I was expecting for work trousers. I've hemmed up the cuff, but I'm not sure I actually like this way of doing it. It's quite bulky, so I might change that. I'm going to give these a, a trial run, actually wear them in the real world, see how I get on with them, and then I'll decide whether or not I want to change that bit. One thing... I wasn't sure of was how stable these cuffs were going to be for location so so you can see on the inside of the cuff there that I've stitched the hem down so there's no raw edges but I think because these cuffs are very heavy they might give it the right sort of movement if you look at old films of people just walking around you'll see the trousers do move quite a bit and they hang very nicely and I wonder if partly that's because of the weight of these cuffs. So I'm going to try these, just wear them doing whatever I would normally do and see how I feel about that. I wasn't sure how stable the cuffs were going to be for keeping themselves up. I think they will stay in place but just in case I put a little tack stitch on the seam both sides so that they can't drop. I mean once they're pressed now they do seem very, very stable, and this fabric does does press really nicely. I'm really pleased with it. I mean, you can't see so much here, you will when I do the reveal, but they actually look like a proper pair of trousers, which, given the, uh, the pattern I was working with, is pretty good. There we go, that's the mock-up made, and I'm actually really, really pleased with how these turned out. I was a bit worried that I wasn't going to get my head around this pattern and after a lot of effort they weren't going to fit, they weren't going to look right but honestly they're really comfortable and it's so nice not to have just the waistband resting on my hips all the time which I just find really uncomfortable. Hopefully after I've worn these a bit longer and I've got used to them with the rest of my clothes I'm also not constantly trying to tuck my shirt back in or trying to pull my waistcoat down so it hides the waistband. You know, all these annoying things that you get with clothes that don't actually fit what you like to wear. 
There is going to be another video because these were the mock-up version. So this was all the lessons learned, all the construction techniques looked into and understood mistakes made. And I do have that nice checked fabric that I want to use to make a decent pair. Now that I understand how much fabric these use a bit better, I think I can probably get a waistcoat as well out of that fabric. I'll know when I actually start making the trousers. Do want to make a waistcoat anyway. I want to show how to draft from an existing garment. I've got a waistcoat that's a bit too long uh, and I'd, I'd like to do a shorter version of it. The fit's quite good, but it needs adjusting on some of the proportions. So we'll have to see about that for a future video. That's it's the next logical step, really. I've done a shirt, I've done some trousers, so the next one's a waistcoat. Who knows, maybe a jacket in the future. There's a few different styles of jacket I'd like to do. Uh, I just don't have the patterns for them, and without the tailor's mannequin, it's a little bit tricky to do things like jackets. They require a lot more work.